peaceful and bucolic. That's the image most people have when they drive by a herd of cattle. And for the most part, that's true. Because today, this herd and others like it throughout California are tuberculosis free. But this hasn't always been the case. And to ensure that our dairy and beef cattle remain protected, we need to be constantly vigilant. Bovine tuberculosis is a highly infectious bacterial disease that can be transmitted to all warm-blooded animals, including humans. In fact, in the early part of the last century, bovine tuberculosis caused more losses among U.S. farm animals than all other infectious diseases combined. The need to contain this menace was obvious. And so, in 1917, the USDA began an eradication program. Every state in the Union adopted the program and followed federal guidelines for tuberculosis surveillance and testing. The program has been so successful that currently all but three states are declared tuberculosis free. However, for California dairy and beef cattle producers, the picture changed in 2002. Thankfully, in April 2005, California regained its tuberculosis accredited free status. However, this was not attained without the cost of thousands of man hours and the need to depopulate three entire dairy herds. Tracing from these herds affected over 500 farms. The cost of the effort? $44 million. Obviously, we don't want another outbreak of bovine TB, and to protect our herds and our economy, we need to ensure the effectiveness of two important processes, surveillance of slaughtered cattle to detect infected animals, and the regular and accurate testing to determine if a herd is infected. The bacteria for bovine tuberculosis, Mycobacterium bovis, or M. bovis, is relatively slow growing. Because of this, the disease is not usually apparent until it's reached an advanced stage. In fact, some livestock that appear to be in prime condition may be seriously infected. Therefore, it's critical that all cattle be examined closely for signs of the disease. The most efficient and accepted method of surveillance is the examination of carcasses at slaughter plants. Each individual carcass is carefully checked by a meat inspector for signs of bovine TB. In cattle, the disease usually presents as small white nodules or tubercles in the lymph nodes and chest cavity, but almost every organ system can be affected. Enlargement of one or more lymph nodes is another common sign of bovine TB. If an animal is suspected of the disease, tissue samples are taken and sent to a diagnostic laboratory for confirmation. Then, if bovine TB is indicated, a trace back is begun. The purpose of the search is to trace the animal back through market channels to find the originating herd. Once found, the entire herd is scheduled for testing. Many herds may be included in a trace investigation from a single TB suspect animal. There are a variety of tests performed on live animals to determine the presence of bovine TB. These tests are performed in a prescribed sequence that rules out animals not suspected of having the disease. The first test in the sequence is the caudal fold test. This test is usually performed by private practice veterinarians. The test is similar to that used in people when screening for tuberculosis. If a caudal fold test is positive, confirmatory testing will be scheduled by regulatory personnel. In the remainder of this program, we'll take a closer look at the precise steps necessary to effectively perform the caudal fold test and discuss a variety of confirmatory tests.
The caudal fold test is the first screening test used to determine if animals need to undergo further testing. In this test, you'll inject tuberculin intradermally into the caudal fold of the animal's tail. Then, after approximately 72 hours, you'll observe and record the response. Remember that the TB injection and the observation must be done by the same veterinarian. The tuberculin used is a purified protein derivative tuberculin that is approved and produced under USDA license. After you receive the tuberculin, refrigerate it, but do not freeze it, and keep it out of sunlight. Be sure to check the expiration date of the tuberculin before using it, and do not prematurely draw the tuberculin into the syringe before the injection. Also, make sure you throw away unused portions, since it oxidizes quickly. Whenever you perform any tuberculin test, remember to completely record all necessary information on an official tuberculosis test record sheet. Be sure to fill in the location and the reason for the test, and keep in mind that the official identification of each animal is required. It is important to note that on the day of the injection, the animal should not be vaccinated or treated because this may affect the test response. In addition, sick cattle should not be injected because they will not adequately respond to the test. To administer the test, use a one milliliter syringe with a 26 gauge, 3 8 inch needle. Once you have drawn the tuberculin into the syringe, inject 0.1 milliliter intradermally on one side of the caudal fold in a clean, non-haired region. Good injections produce a bleb Re-inject if you do not make a good intradermal injection. Make a note into which side, left or right, the tuberculin was injected. In large herds, all cattle should be injected on the same side for consistency and to make observing the test easier. You must return in 72 hours to observe and record the test results. After the 72-hour waiting period, the injection site is observed both visually and by palpation to see if the animal has a cell-mediated immune response to the tuberculin. If there is no detectable response, the animal is classified as negative and may be returned to the herd. However, any visible or palpable response at the site of the injection indicates a positive response, and the animal will be subjected to further testing. Remember that a positive caudal fold test response does not mean that an animal has bovine TB. The response can also result from exposure to other bacteria closely related to Mycobacteria bovis. In fact, between 1 and 5% of all animals tested will exhibit a positive response. This issue is so critical that the USDA is monitoring the response rate from individual practitioners. They expect to see a response rate of at least 1% over time. Whatever response rate you obtain, be sure to record all responses on the official forms. Positive responses should be reported to the animal health branch immediately and test records provided, so they may schedule confirmatory testing. Even if you have no positive responses, you must mail the white and green copies of the test records to your local animal health branch within five days of reading the test. The timing and delivery of the records is crucial because confirmatory testing must be done soon after the caudal fold test. One confirmatory test, the comparative cervical test, must be performed within 10 days of the caudal fold test injection. If this deadline is not met, 60 days must pass before retesting. Therefore, the animal health branch will schedule and perform a comparative cervical test within seven days of your reading of a positive caudal fold test. A new test, the gamma interferon blood test, may alternatively be used by regulatory officials as a confirmatory test. The blood sample for this test may be collected up to 30 days after the caudal fold test. As I mentioned earlier, a positive response to the caudal fold test does not mean the animal has bovine TB. The response may be the result of exposure to avian TB, Yoni's disease, or other mycobacterium. 
In order to help rule these out, a comparative cervical test or gamma interferon blood test comparing the reactions of both bovine and avian tuberculin is performed by a state or a federal veterinarian. To perform a comparative cervical test, the regulatory veterinarian first shaves two areas on the neck of the animal. The skin thickness of the two areas is then measured with a special caliper and recorded. 6.5 millimeters. Next, avian tuberculin is injected intradermally into the upper area and bovine tuberculin is injected into the lower area. After 72 hours, the results are recorded by the same veterinarian who performed the injections. Both sites are observed visually, and the skin thickness of each site is again measured with a special caliper. Next, the veterinarian plots the measured results on an official USDA comparative cervical test scattergram. The x-axis of the scattergram is a measure of the bovine tuberculin response in millimeters, and the y-axis is the measure of the avian response. For example, if the bovine response was 8 millimeters and the avian response was 7 millimeters, the results would go here. You'll notice that the scattergram is divided into three zones, negative for M. bovis, suspect, and reactor. Depending on the reactions to the two tuberculins, the animal will fall into one of these three zones. The negative to M. bovis zone indicates that the animal is no longer suspected of having bovine tuberculosis. These animals may be returned to the herd. If an animal falls into the suspect zone, it's considered a bovine TB suspect. In this case, the animal can either be retested in 60 days or, at the owner's expense, be removed from the herd and euthanized for enhanced TB inspection and additional diagnostic testing. If the animal is retested in 60 days and the results remain in the suspect zone, the animal will be reclassified as a reactor. Animals are classified as reactors in one of two ways, either from having two comparative cervical tests that fall into the suspect zone or having one test that falls in the reactor zone. Additionally, the animal can be classified as a reactor using the bovine gamma interferon test. This test is similar to the comparative cervical test in that it compares the animal cell mediated immune response to avian and bovine tuberculins. However, the response is measured in a blood assay. Depending on the reaction to bovine and avian tuberculins, the animal is classified as negative, suspect, or reactor in a similar way to the scattergram classification. This assay can be completed in 24 hours and avoid some of the inconsistencies that affect the comparative cervical test. However, classification as a reactor by either the comparative cervical test or the gamma interferon test still does not necessarily mean the animal has bovine TB. Therefore, all animals classified as reactors are indemnified and sent to a laboratory for euthanasia and further diagnostic testing. A necropsy with extensive lymph node examination is performed on all animals classified as bovine TB reactors. A pool of lymph nodes from the head and chest region are collected and submitted for culture, even in the absence of lesions. Any suspicious lesions found during the necropsy are collected for culture and evaluated by histopathology using standard H&E stains. If the lesions have characteristics suggestive of tuberculosis, an acid-fast stain is performed. The acid-fast test is a microscopic examination of tissue samples that have been dyed with an acid-fast stain. If bovine TB bacteria are present, they will show up as short red or pink rods. However, other bacteria can also absorb acid-fast stain, so this test is still not definitive. If the results of the acid-fast test are positive, 
Tissue samples are then tested by a polymerase chain reaction, or PCR. PCR is a sensitive genetic test that can differentiate between mammalian and avian TB strains. However, not all mammalian TB are M. bovis, so a culture is required for a definitive result. Cultures are incubated for eight weeks before being reported as negative. If positive, the bacteria may grow sooner, but further testing will take another four to six weeks to confirm as M. bovis. If no organisms can be cultured, no further testing is done. Finally, samples that test positive for M. bovis are now being DNA fingerprinted. The DNA fingerprinting is especially important since it identifies the strain of M. bovis. Comparing strains of M. bovis with one another helps to determine the source of TB infections in cattle herds. Well, as you've seen, there are many steps and tests involved in positively identifying bovine tuberculosis. Let's briefly recap these steps in the order they're conducted. As a veterinary practitioner, the test you'll be performing is the caudal fold test. And it's important to remember that when you conduct the test accurately, you should expect to see one to five animals respond out of a hundred tested. When you do get a positive result, call your local animal health branch office immediately. If you don't find any responders, mail the test records to the local animal health branch within five days. Cattle that are negative are considered TB free and may be returned to the herd. The comparative cervical test must be given within 10 days of the caudal fold test. If the gamma interferon test is used, blood must be collected within 30 days of the caudal fold test. If the comparative cervical test shows an animal falling in the negative zone of the USDA scattergram, it is considered TB free and may be returned to the herd. If the animal falls in the suspect zone, it may be slaughtered for further testing or it may be retested after 60 days. If the animal is still in the suspect zone, it is considered a positive reactor. Finally, if the animal falls within the reactor zone, it is sent to a laboratory for further testing. If the gamma interferon test is used instead of the comparative cervical test, cattle will similarly be classified into negatives, suspects, and reactors. At the lab, an inspection is made for gross signs of infection and collection of lymph nodes for culture. In addition, up to four other tests may be conducted. Compatible histopathology lesions undergo acid-fast staining. If bacteria are seen, they are tested by PCR and cultured. If no organisms are isolated, no further testing is performed. However, if organisms are isolated, the sample undergoes further testing. If the bacteria is not M. bovis, no further testing is done. And if the samples are M. bovis, they are DNA fingerprinted to determine the strain. Obviously, this is a lengthy and complex process, but it's critical for maintaining California's bovine TB free status. And as the first link in the chain, your efforts are critical. Critical for preventing the re-establishment of bovine tuberculosis. Critical for California's economy and critical for maintaining animal and human health. For further information, please call your local animal health branch at one of the following numbers. You can also visit the California Department of Food and Agriculture website at www.cdfa.ca.gov or the USDA website at www.aphis.usda.gov/vs.